after staring blankly into the camera and ignoring my instruction, her eyes narrowed and she fixed me with a stare and said, Catherine Dawn Lang, Katie Lang, shot on the 19th of May, 1997 for the Observer Life. Although it's been over 20 years since her formidable PR, Barbara Sharon introduced us, I still feel slightly unsettled about this shoot. At the time, she was a huge star, a kind of trailblazer for lesbians. She'd been photographed on the cover of Vanity Fair by Herb Ritz. I was a huge fan of his, great photographer, no longer with us. And in this picture, she'd been in a barber's chair having a shave by Cindy Crawford, who was the most gorgeous model of the era. The picture was either a kind of ludicrous, absurd piece of nonsense, or years ahead of its time, playing with notions of gender fluidity. It all depends on your point of view. The shoot was in the boardroom of Warner Brothers Records, which was located in Church Street, which is off Kensington High Street, a sort of rather posh part of London. Quite a boring environment, so I had lots of backdrops to set up and I had lighting to put up. I was, I admit, quite flattered when Barbara, who's a bit of a legend, this PR, introduced me to Katie Lang as a brilliant photographer. Assuming her beautiful voice was an insight into her character, into her soul, I thought this is going to be a breeze. And I smiled and shook her hand and introduced her to my assistant, Sarah. It's something of a mantra for me that, I think it was Diane Arbus, who's another one of my favorite photographers, uh, she used to say that a portrait is a record of the relationship you have with the person on the day. So you do everything you can to ensure that you have a good rapport, an authentic human exchange. She was in position, we were all ready to go, I was feeling confident, but something was clearly wrong. I love using daylight, but in this instance, there was none. So I used my ring flash redhead combo that we detail in our video about the Wu-Tang Clan. After staring blankly into the camera and ignoring my instruction, her eyes narrowed and with real hostility, she said, you are really beginning to f me off. Emotionally sucker punched, I stammered an apology. I mean, often in situations like this, it's like you're dealing with a force out of your control. It's like you're surfing a wave and trying to sort of stay afloat. I told her that for the rest of the shoot, I would be mute and she should just express herself in a way that she felt was authentic. I mean, what else could I say? The rest of the shoot was just the silence punctuated by the click, click, click of my shutter being released. All that could be heard was this. I got the pictures. She was all swoons and smiles. The camera got what it wanted. It was like I was excluded from the process. But what incongruity between the way she was with me and the way the images looked. Very, very disconcerting. When the article came out, I had the cover. I had a nice spread inside. But for several years after that, I couldn't even bear to look at the pictures and I certainly didn't put them in my portfolio. They just seem so fake. When I did that shoot, it was a different time. I was a different person. I'd met and married a wonderful woman. I'd had the first of my three lovely children. My career was soaring. Everything was going according to plan. I was probably quite a brittle and cocky, complacent young man. Years had passed. So I decided to tell the story of my KD Lang shoot on my Instagram. I uploaded the pictures and regaled the full kind of horror of my experience. And to my surprise, there in the comments was a sorry 
from KD Lang. Maybe she wasn't in a good place at the time of the shoot. And I didn't really have the emotional toolkit to appreciate that, you know, life has its ups and downs. I'd had mostly ups. And so I just thought she was a, some spoilt star when she could have been going through an emotional crisis. So I hope, you know, she was contrite. So I hope that she's in a good place now. The images were shot on my Hasselblad and my Fuji 6.7 rangefinder. And the film I used was EPD color, cross-processed and Kodak Tri-X, classic black and white film.